all right um good afternoon guys so i hope that everyone is having a really good start to their new year um today was a really good start for the all share price index i think it went up by almost 400 points and i hope that we'll get to my target of 13500 over the next few weeks so um looking good it's looking really strong and there's a lot of volume coming in as well which is a really good sign so today uh, i decided to do dip products and uh, hay carb uh, a lot of people have been requesting it and i think uh, i think i think that's a good choice because uh, they are a bit more tricky than most of the stocks that we have looked at so far so uh, i think that would this this would be a really good video for everyone to watch so make sure you watch the entire video i believe you'll be able to gain some good knowledge out of it so uh make sure to watch it uh make sure to stay subscribed and most importantly make sure to like the video so right let's get started with dip products so as the usual thing that we do we uh zoom out of the chart to look at the overall trend now uh, since prices bottomed out in may of 2020 we can see this very strong uptrend in dip products where uh prices pretty much went from almost six rupees all the way to uh around this 76 area so we have seen a very strong uptrend and after that uh, after we had this big uh, double top over here and then prices broke through the confirmation line which is this point over here we have pretty much seen a very uh, sketchy sort of price action in dip products so we have seen this uh, sort of uh, bounce off of a more like a bearish bounce where prices fell apart and then we saw a very minor bounce and then we prices fell apart again and then we saw another bounce over here and then since that point prices have been pretty much consolidating apart from this um, this small move over here it's not a small move but relative to the overall price action it was pretty much of a more uh, but it was pretty much of a nothing move really so um, since then prices have again fallen apart and then we are seeing a bit of a consolidation on low volume so uh, now that we have obviously looked at the overall trend which is as of now not favoring the buyers let's look at the moving average so again we look at the 20 50 and the 200 is simple moving average so as of now you can see that uh, prices are below this flattening 200 day moving average it's not bearish but it's flattened out and also this 20 and 50 day moving average is pretty much hovering around each other so as of now what we see here through the moving averages is pretty much uh, a period of sideways action so remember we, we we said that if the moving averages are clearly aligned with each other that means the prices it's showing that prices are in a consolidation phase now does that mean that it's going, going to go to the downside well uh, you can't really say that it can po possibly be an accumulation phase and then we can we can even see an upside breakout or we might even see a downside breakout so which is the whole reason why i don't like trading these tight ranges unless we have a clear direction so as of now the direction is not is unclear because we are pretty much hovering around this 200 day moving average and if you had watched my previous videos you would know that uh, the 200 day moving average which is this black line over here is what differentiates the price from a bear and a bull market so if prices are above it it's in a bull market if prices are below it it's in a bear market so as of now we are pretty much just a, about and around that moving average so that does not mean that it's bearish it just means that we just don't have a proper direction so as of now which is why i would avoid it but as we dig more deep into the chart you would realize that there's something setting up in di uh, dip products which might be a good signal for the intermediate term or the medium term so right so now we have figured out that the moving averages are also showing a period of consolidation which means that if you're a trader or a momentum trader or a short-term trader whatever uh, you shouldn't be trying to get into di uh, dip products unless you're looking to invest which in that case you need to be a bit more aware of the fundamentals of the company as well so right so we have looked at the moving averages now let's quickly look at a possible chart pattern now i have uh, figured I, I posted about this uh, i think it was last month i think start of december i posted about this pattern that i saw which is this over here so what we see here is a possible uh, large base uh, what we call this is a symmetrical triangle i'm pretty sure some uh, a lot of you would have been would be aware of this pattern it's pretty uh, common in in any stock market so what we see here is a possible symmetrical triangle formation so let's quickly extend these trend lines over here 
right so we are going to look at something new today in terms of chart patterns so make sure to pay attention so again like i said we are looking at a possible symmetrical triangle now can we call this a symmetrical triangle no because if you have watched my videos i told you that unless we see a breakout a proper breakout we cannot confirm a pattern now prices can be trading in this range and it, it can look like a possible symmetrical triangle but as of now we do not have uh, a breakout so we can't confirm the pattern so what we can see is something like this and then probably something like this something like this something like this and then probably upside breakout uh, mid of this year that's that's what i'm looking at but um, let's quickly look at something more important so how do we predict a possible breakout in terms of a time period now all of these time what we are looked at is how we measure a price target but we have never looked at how we can possibly use patterns to predict a possible time frame in which prices might break out so that's what we're going to look at now now usually um, theoretically we say that good breakouts across any pattern happens between two uh, half to two third of the way within the size of the pattern so here we can see that the size of the pattern is pretty much from this point over here right over here all the way till this point so the ending point of a pattern is when these two lines converge with each other so the the, the converging point that the intercept is pretty much the end of the pattern so we can see that we have a time period of roughly two years because the start of the pattern was roughly around january of 2021 and the point where these two lines intersect with each other is roughly around the same time period at 2000 in 2023 so that's two years right so two years we know that the length of the pattern is two years now we need to figure out a possible time frame now i told you that a good breakout happens anywhere between half to two third of the way between each other so what we can look from here is that we can see that half of the period roughly ends between the end of 2021 so this is half of the pattern which is at the end of 2021 so to the, here over here this is a possible level that we might see a breakout but we haven't because prices are still uh, no, nowhere close to a breakout to the upside because we are still hovering around this lower trend line so the next point of breakout is roughly around two thirds of the pattern so two thirds of the pattern roughly falls around mid of this year so the, which is why i said we might see a possible move during the mid of this year so again this is like i said not a stock to get in as of now because if you're a trader there are much other opportunities in the market so getting into something that isn't even giving confirmation is a big opportunity cost so for you uh, i've given you a possible time frame which can be probably mid of this year that we might see an upside move in dip products or it might take a bit more longer some some people use three three fourth or uh, or uh, 75% of the move the pattern so the size of the pattern over here is two years so you calculate 75% of two years and then you can project a possible time frame of a breakout so anything ab above that is not a good sign so usually you would want to see this two third of the area that's where you want to see a breakout so roughly around mid of this year is when I would like to see dip products move to the upside so that being said again prices are hovering around this lower trend line so definitely not something that i would get into as of now but uh, what i would like to see is some sort of move higher over here and then a bit of consolidation and breakout so if you want an early entry point then possibly a breakout above this level right here which is roughly at around um around 54 50 to 55 rupees let's just write it down here 50 to 55 rupees that's uh, a possible entry point for me where i might consider getting in if we do see that we might see a move where prices might move towards this upper trend line not break out but then we might see a bit more of a consolidation phase where we might see another pullback a bit of another rise a pullback and then a breakout finally during the mid of this year so that being said i can't guarantee you that that will that's exactly how it's going to happen we might even see a complete breakdown below this trend line over the next few weeks as well so which is why i said best wait for confirmation and uh, you know not try to speculate too much about what prices might do so um, right so now we have looked at something new which is uh, the time frame um, so just to uh, briefly sum things up what i said was how we measure a possible time frame in which prices might break out is we take the length of the pattern so here it's two years 
and a good breakout usually happens between half to two third of the way during the formation of the pattern. So half is already here, which is already done and dusted. So now it's the two third of the pattern. So roughly around mid of this year is what we are looking at. So, um, right. So, um, let's, uh, let's look at, yeah. So I think that's about it. So let's quickly look at a price target and a stop level. So again, uh, this is some nothing new for how we measure price target is we take the height of the pattern. So assuming that the height is at the highest point is at 76.50 and the lowest point is roughly at around this uh, 39 area. So uh, let me get this. So that gives you roughly a height of around 37.50 rupees. So assuming that we see a breakout around this point over here, mid of this year. So we are roughly looking at a breakout above this 65 area. So assuming that we, the breakout is at 65, we get a price target of roughly around 100 rupees. So a price target to the upside, if we do see an upside breakout can possibly be 100 rupees over the intermediate term or the medium term. So. Um, that's that. In terms of a stop level, uh, one good stop level is the obvious stop level will be if prices close uh, below this trend line. So a daily close below this trend line uh, would be obviously a point where I would sell it. I would sell my uh, position. But uh, another move, if you're going to get in early at this level, then obviously my stop would be on a close below this level also. So if you want to give more flexibility, you can obviously have your stop below this trend line and not... Uh, around this 54, 50 to 55 area. So um, the best case stop level for you uh, with where you will have good flexibility and at the same time, um, a guarantee, not a guarantee, but more likely a, a bigger probability that prices might break down further if prices close below this trend line. So in that case, uh, you have a better probability that there might be a bearish move here rather than prices just slowly break into this through this level. So. In that case, the best case stop level for me is on a close below this trend line. And uh, there are two ways you can enter. Either you can enter over here if prices can break out and you see heavy volume on this break, then that might be a possible level for you to get in. Um, also, or else if you want to be a bit more conservative, if you want more proof that the move is actually real, then you best thing is to wait for this trend line over here from its prior all time highs to be broken in that case. Uh, if it does get broken and if you have a proper breakout, we might see uh, dip products run towards this 100 area over the uh, medium term. So uh, downside risk is obviously there as well because as of now, the downside risk is much higher than the upside potential. So as of now, which is exactly the reason why I told you to avoid it or at least wait a few more weeks to see what price action, to see how price action will behave before you start getting in. So. Um, that's about it on dip products. So let's quickly summarize what we spoke about. We know that the uh, moving averages are showing that dip products is in a period of consolidation. So as of now, if you're a momentum trader or someone who's looking for the short term, uh, not a point to get in at. Uh, we looked at a, a possible entry level, which is roughly around 54, 50 to 55 rupees. We know our stop level is below this uh, trend line over here, which is the most important trend line in my opinion. We have a symmetrical triangle formation, which uh, is a neutral pattern. So uh, it prices can break to the upside or the downside, which is why you need to wait for confirmation most of the time. And most importantly, we looked at a new uh, method of looking at when we might predict a possible breakout, which is pretty much taking the length of the pattern and then looking for two th to half to two thirds of the way to the pattern to see a possible time frame in which prices might break out. And uh, we looked at the price target, which is roughly at around 100 rupees if we see an upside breakout and our stop level going below a close on this trend line on the daily time frame. So that's about, you know, dip products. I think uh, I have given you a bit of a different view than what most people think on it. So um, I know that there's a lot of news and a lot of uh, noise going around it. Some people are bullish, some people are bearish because Deep Products has mostly been relying on the COVID-19 and the pandemic pretty much. So uh, I'm not sure about exactly how it's doing from a com company point of view, but in terms of price action as of now, I would avoid it until we get proper confirmation. So that's about it on uh, Deep Products. Let's quickly move into Haycarb. Right, so Haycarb is obviously something very similar to dip products, except the fact that uh, this is a bit more weaker than dip products. So if you zoom out of the chart, what we can see here is we can see a very 
very very strong uptrend uh, it was a much stronger than dip products was we saw the covid 19 bottom roughly at around 15 rupees and since then prices ran up all the way to around 170 bucks so um, a very big impulsive move and then we saw this uh, january uh, crash where we also had a gap down which is going to be a very important level of supply for buyers to break through so we saw that one and then since then prices are pretty much been in a downtrend so let's quickly look at the moving average to confirm the move now as of now we can see that the slope of the 200 day moving average is a negative which means that we are in an overall bear market and also at the same time we can see that roughly the 20 and the 50 yet is to align so when i say aligning if you're in a bear market we need to see the 20 below the 50 moving average and all three of the moving averages are moving down so to very simply put it let's uh, quickly draw this curve over here so this is what i expect so something like this and then the 50 moving average uh, below the 200 but above the 20 and the 20 below the 50 and the 200 and all of them are sloping down so as of now uh, not something definitely not something that i would get in i usually have a key filter when i screen for stocks and one of them is that prices must be above a rising 200 day moving average anything if anything if anything else i would not consider stock honestly i would not even look at the stock so um, it's a very key filter for me it, it just helps me look at more quality setups than trying to speculate on whether prices would actually rise or fall so for me you need to obviously have your own set of rules my rule is obviously one of them is that prices should not be below a 200 day moving average so um, right that's that's about it from the moving averages we know that prices are in a possible bear market so now let's quickly let's quickly look at a chart formation so what we see here is we see this uh, uh, bearish trend line over here let's see the exact trend line. I think the trend line starts from here right so we we have this bearish trend trend line over here we can see that prices stalled across multiple points on the chart we can see a stall over here we can see a bit of a stall over here prices almost got to that level then we see another stall over here over here we have a clear stall over there and then we also have a failed move over here as well so why i call it a failed move is because here we can see that as soon as prices broke out the next day prices revert reversed to the downside even though volume was low prices fell apart to the downside so that is obviously a failed a move or a, a fake out as we call it it's called a fake out so um, right so we obviously know that this remains a key level for the bias to break now at the same time we can see a possible wedge formation as well on dip product uh, sorry uh, on hiccup so clearly we can see a nice bullish wedge forming but that being said something that i have always spoken about during the first uh, few videos that i posted here was that attention must be paid to where prices are on the 200 day moving average regardless of how big and bullish the pattern is if prices are below this 200 day moving average more often than not there's a high probability that even if we see a valid breakout the prices might stall around this 200 day moving average and then eventually uh, come down again so uh, which is exactly why i usually do not uh, trade anything below this 200 day moving average even though we have a large base forming on the on the on any on any big, on any big time frame whether it's a daily or the weekly uh, i do not trade it mostly because more often than not there will also most likely be a lot of sellers around this area so um right so let's just this is obviously a confusing part for most people so let's quickly refresh everything that we have looked at so we know that there's a bullish pattern on dip products but however we are below a declining 200 day moving average so your mo the more the emphasis the emphasis should be paid mostly towards the slope of the 200 day moving average than the pattern so if the pattern is bullish but prices are below the 200 day moving average you avoid trading it so uh, look that being said it's completely up to you if you if you want if you want to take the risk then it's it's completely up to you take the risk probably it might pay out but 
overall uh, on average from what i've seen more more often than not prices do fail if prices are below a declining 200 day moving average so um how do we trade uh, the uh, hey carb now there are several ways that you can trade it one is you don't get in on the actual breakout so even if you see heavy volume coming in and we see a uh, actual breakout we do not get in so when do we get in so that usually happens when the moving average is aligned so what i would like to see is this 200 day moving average start to slowly flatten out and for prices to break out and consolidate around this area over here so i want to see it consolidate a bit and then um, and then slowly get above this 200 day moving average we uh, Right, uh, let's do this. Right, so this is what I want to see. Something like this, and I want to see prices eventually get above the 200 day moving average and then consolidate again a bit more above it and then break out to the upside. So, this is the sort of price action that I would like to see uh, HACAB make. So, that is when I would get in, I would not get in over here. This is not when I would get in. I would like to get in if prices consolidate prices move back above the 200 day moving average and the slope of the moving average starts to flatten out and start rising and then prices start moving higher so around it's around this area around this mid 90s possibly is where i would like to get in and not at these prices now if you ask me why i say you why i tell that i would get in around the mid 90s when i have a chance to get in in the mid 70s uh, usually in technical analysis uh, we usually most of the time pay a premium to get confirmation so i would rather get in over here and possibly you know ride it all the way towards this 130 level than to get in at 75 and see sellers coming at this level and then see prices quickly fall apart to the downside and eventually sell my stock at a loss so it, always getting in too early comes at a cost some most of the time it fails there are times when it pays off but it's not a good habit to start speculating too much on moves that aren't confirmed yet so this is the sort of price action that i would like to see on hacob so overall let's quickly sum up everything that we looked at we know that the 200 day moving average is bearish and declining the slope of the 200 day moving average so therefore prices are in a possible bear market we see a bullish wedge forming here but uh, again we pay more emphasis to the slope of the moving average than the pattern so as of now uh, the pattern is below the 200 day moving average so most likely if we do see a breakout we might see a possible stall where, pri where sellers would come in at that level and then push prices down so we also looked at a possible um, point of entry where i would like to see this 200 day moving average flatten out and prices get above it consolidate a bit and then break to the upside so in terms of a price target my price target as always we looked at conservative price targets so a conservative price target would be the pattern high and that would be roughly at around 130 rupees and if if i'm to get into the long side and if i wait around this area over here then my potential stop level would be around this around this 84 to 83 area so that is where my stop would be if i'm to get in at these levels um if you if you have already got in at these levels then the worst case stop would be below around this 60 let me check the exact price uh, below 68 rupees so if prices cl close below 68 rupees on the daily chart um, that's where i would stop myself out so right so we have looked at pretty much everything that we look at we looked at the price tag we looked at possible stop levels and most importantly we have looked at new things today in terms of uh, looking at a possible time frame to get in and also we have looked at possible entry points according to our moving averages uh, align and react to price action so as of now uh, hay carb and uh, dip products are not things that i would look to get into but dip products on the other hand looks much more better than hay carb so as of now uh, both aren't something that i would focus on on the short term there are much better opportunities so yeah that's about it if you guys have any questions don't uh, forget to post your comment uh, don't uh, don't forget to comment below and i'll be happy to answer your questions 
and most importantly uh, if you like the content make sure to like subscribe and share the video with your friends it would be really helpful for the channel and most importantly i hope that you guys watch the entire video so um thank you for coming to watch the video i hope you guys have a really good day and uh, catch you guys on the next video thank you guys thank you for watching